Hello, let's look at the types of data required in educational planning. There are different kinds of data we require in educational planning. The first one is quantitative data. What are these quantitative data? We're talking about schools. Schools is quantitative in the in respect that you need to know the number of schools. For example, if you want to plan for a locality, you need to know how many schools you want to plant in that particular place. At the same time, you may want to know how many schools are already in existence. So in this case, you're going to come up in a number to say three schools, five schools, and the schools have to go in different levels. Like you know, you have three levels in Nigeria. You have the primary, secondary, and the higher education. So the top number of schools is quantitative. The next one is the students. Students, you may want to quantify to know how many students are enrolled in a particular school. At the same time, you may want to find out their ages. So in when talking about students, you're going to put a count. In this case, you have student one, student two, student three, and so on. And at the same time, you can go further to quantify the types of students. Maybe those at the primary level, those in secondary level, and those in higher institution. The next one we're going to look at is the teaching and not teaching staff. They are vital data that you required when you are planning. When you have the student, you know to know the number of staff that will be required. That is where we talk about student-teacher ratio. How many academic staff will you require that are going to teach? How many non-teaching staff will you require? Even the person that is going to clean up the, envir the environmental staff, they are required to make the environment neat for studies. So when you're talking about the teaching and non-teaching staff, it's going to be quantified in number to know how many do you need at a particular time. Now we talk about the population which is quite vital. If we're looking at the population of a particular country, you take a census of it, we look at the school going age, which is very, very paramount. You need to know the school going age and you, that will help you to plan. How many of them are six years old? How many of them will be six years in some years to come? How many aged parents do you have within the age group? How many of them are due for secondary school or higher institution? All these things matters when you are planning for education. Then the next thing is finance. Nothing can work if the finance is not there. You need money to drive what you need to do. There are facilities and equipment. Again, when you plan, you have schools, the number of schools, the number of students you're going to enroll in that school will determine the total number of benches that will be required, number of desks, number of chairs, number of teachers, and so also we are talking about facilities in this instance. We are talking about the equipment that will be required that will help to facilitate teaching and learning. Then you talk about the school inspection. In this area of school inspection, you call it a quantitative data because you need to know the number of times you carry out an inspection in a particular season. And that will help you to determine whether what you're doing is right or not. Now, we'll talk about the assets and liability of schools. School, you have assets, at the same time, you have liabilities that could be shielded. So in this case, you need to identify sometimes what is an asset could be a liability at a point and what is liability could be an asset at another point. So in this area, you need to know what are the liabilities that you need to have. For example, if you're going to pay your salaries to staff, remember that will be part of the liabilities that you have. But again, if you have a building, existing building, that is built is owned by the school, is form of an asset for you. So you need to know where your assets and your liability, draw the lines to know where they lie. Now, we talk about the benchmark. Remember, I mentioned the benchmark in the last video. The benchmark gives us a guide on what we need to do. Remember that in every institution, in every country, we have the Quality Assurance Commission. In Nigeria, we have the Quality Assurance Commission from the primary section to the higher level. So this, this Quality Assurance Commission, they are the ones that put down what should be. It's a benchmark. It's the minimum. That doesn't mean you cannot go beyond the minimum, but the minimum is required. So these are quantitative data that you will need in educational planning. Now, what about the quantitative? Let's look at the qualitative data. Like here, again, in the qualitative, we are going to see benchmark. Remember, in the last one, we talk about the benchmark. 
we mentioned the benchmark in the last uh, one. Don't be surprised because we said benchmark, we saw it as qualitative. Then in the immediate past, we have seen it as quantitative. Depends on what you are taking in there. If you are taking it in the form that you are going to use figures to describe what is in there, it becomes quantitative. But if you are not using figures, you are picking the content that is entailed to help you measure what you are doing, it becomes qualitative. So let's look at the qualitative data here we have. We're looking at the vision. When you are planning, you don't plan, you know, just randomly like that no there must be a purpose for your plan there must be a need for your plan so what are you planning for there must be a vision of an organization of an educational setting of a nation so what is the focus you must know the focus that focus is what will drive what you need in your planning then we're talking about the mission again you have the mission here what is your plan the vision the vision that you come to the mission. The mission will help you bring out what is required to achieve the vision. So when you know the institutional vision or mission, if you are planning for an institution, and if it's a nation, you know their vision and mission, then it will help you to select what is required that will help you have an accurate planning. Now, we have, again, objectives. When the vision is set, you have the mission, then you now go to objective. What is it that will be an outcome of that particular learning that has been put in place? So that will help you also to plan. You don't just sit down and plan because you just feel like planning or you just feel like feeling that things should be done in a certain way. No, when you want to plan, you plan to meet the vision, mission and objective of an institution or nation. Now, we're talking about educational, national educational policy. These are very, very vital in educational planning. You look at the mission, you look at the vision, you look at the objective, then you look at the policy in education. Now, when you are looking, talking about the vision, which vision are we looking at? As a Nigerian, we have uh, a vision. Con the, Nigeria, the country Nigeria has a vision, it has a mission, it has objective, and when you go down, it has the national educational policy, which spells out what the nation is expecting to get from the educational sector. So what you need to do is to study and know what is required. Then from there, you will be able to know the next way forward, how you can move it on to ensure that what you are proposing for the future will be realistic. Now, we're talking about the benchmark again. You see, I've explained that earlier on. You see, it's coming up here. It's both quantitative and qualitative, depends on what you pick from it. Then the curriculum is qualitative. Here, you are spelling out the intended learning outcome, the knowledge that you want the learners to take away. That is what you are putting down here. And this one is not just brought up anyhow. You know, again, this is where sometimes we have a miss up whereby those in, <clears throat> in the non educational planning was, oh no, this is curriculum, you can't go there. As a planner, actually, you go around all. You go around all. Because if you are planning, you need to know the curriculum. You need to know whether that curriculum is going to suit the economic need. For example, in Nigeria today, we are having the economic need. Now, if you want to plan, we want to look at the curriculum we are having. Is it actually helping us to meet that drive? When we are talking about Oh, we are having unemployment, increased unemployment rate. Is it as a result of what we, the students have read? Is it as a result of the knowledge gained? Or because the job is not just there? So curriculum is vital. Now, this take is going to the primary and secondary data where you are carrying out your planning. We have the primary data and we have the secondary data. We're talking about the primary data. The primary data are the data that you collect directly from the source. How do I mean from the real, uh, the, 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 if let's assume you want to get data about the age of school going children. Instead of you to go to the Ministry of Education and collect what they have there, or you go to a school, pick the registration uh, register, and pick there, you may decide now to go and meet the students directly and ask of their ages. When you do that, it's primary data. But if, on the other hand, you just walk into a school, meet the principal, and the principal brings out the admission 
uh, register and from the administration register you are able to get all the names that are required that will be secondary data not that now what are the other things that we need to know one sources of data you need to know where to find your data this is very very vital and again this is an area that we really really need to build up because in getting your data if your data is not right then it will affect the result of your planning so the data need to be right now we're talking about suitability of the data how suitable is the data you are collecting it is vital as well now what are the problems that data face when you are collecting them one is for census based like you want to get the accurate data on the age going uh, students to know how many of them have been absorbed in school and how many are still out there that have not been absorbed. So if this census is not right, then you will not get the right data. The fraudulent compilation of official record. Again, you see that if you get to some schools, some persons they change figures because they feel the higher the number, the better for them on the money that will come in for them to run. But however, you discover when these are done, it's not giving the right information and when the right information is not gotten it affects the planning and therefore it will affect the general system in the nation so this is not always good to tamper with uh, records but however we still find this somehow around us the secrecy attached to official documents there are some data you will need to plan but because of fear of the unknown they will not release those data to you. And once the data are not released, you will not be able to plan the way you ought to plan. Then storage of incorrect data. Now, data has been falsified. Somebody else picked that data, put it somewhere. Anybody that comes, you need data, he releases it to you as a secondary data. In that case, when you plan with such data again, the planning will have some issue. Then inadequate funding. Yes, this is equally there. But again, you need money that can help you move around to collect your data, analyze your data before you can interpret and bring it to know. Now, having said this, let us look at what we can get out of it. I want you to visit a school again or a unit in the Ministry of Education in charge of educational planning in the school, state or nation. State the sources of their educational data. How are they getting their data? Find out. Because if it is not right, then it's affecting the policy too that will be taken. What were the challenges they encounter in collecting the data? Suggest ways the challenges can be overcome. Do this and we'll meet on the discussion forum. Thank you.